Good morning, afternoon, and evening to all judges, students, ladies, and gentlemen. We are G4GF. Over the past year, we have encountered and gone through many challenges in this pandemic, which is still going on. So under this year's theme, Youth During and After the Pandemic, a proposal for the new normal, we aim to take this opportunity to, to focus on our topic, which is the online transition of the secondary education. Before we dive into our presentation, we would like to quickly introduce ourselves. So my name is Jocelyn, and I'm from York University, which is located in Toronto, Canada. I'm currently in my second year and majoring in linguistics. Hello, everyone. My name is Angel Azihara. I am a, a Jose International University student from Japan, and I am a second year student majoring in international humanities. My name is Kenny. I'm currently studying at the University of British Columbia here in Vancouver. I am in my fourth year. and. Uh, focusing on international trade and development. My name is Hiromi Oragai. I study at um, Hokkaido University in Japan. I'm in my third year and studying first economics. So here's the overview of our presentation today. So let me first talk about problem identification. We identified two problems. The first one is, has the online transition worked out? What are the advantages? of remote learning when compared to in-person instruction in the university classroom. And the other one is, how does digital learning shape interpersonal relations and communication that are so critical in students' self-identification? Here are the advantages of online learning. First, we have more free time to get involved. Because we don't have to commute anymore, we can spend more time on ex extracurricular opportunities such as student club activities and programs like this forum. And another thing is that online learning can promote time management skills and replayability of lectures. When lectures are pre-recorded, we have, we have to manage our schedule by ourselves and make sure that we watch all of the lectures. This would improve our time management skills. And in addition, we can watch the lectures as many times as we want when they are pre-recorded. The last one is that organization of um, course information. Um, instead of physical printouts, professors provide us with digital files, which are easier to organize well. This is even good for management managing space and for the envir environment in the sense of saving resources. Now I will be talking about the four main areas that we think should be improved for better online learning. First, lack of communication between professors and students online. Because of the circumstances we are currently in, students have less opportunity to ask professors about questions that are related to their education. That would mean students will not get instant feedback from, profess from professors. In Japan, students are likely to send emails, while in Canada, students reach out to their professors and talk in assigned offices. Second, we have interacting with peers. As I have mentioned before, students have a hard time keeping contact with their classmates. Due to the absence of face-to-face -face interactions, it is harder to build interrelation interpersonal relationships. This may result in less developed skills that will be critical in their job hunting. For the third part, less opportunity for breakout rooms. Integrating online learning is a new idea for most universities. Most of the structure in various courses will, need, uh, will be need to be revamped to adapt to this new way of learning. Not all the platforms that universities use have breakout ses sessions for students to engage with each other. Breakout sessions are a necessity, especially for courses that value um, learning from collaborations such as language courses. Lastly, technical issues. Having technical problems are one of the main hurdles of online learning. Very often, there will be compatibility issues with operating system or certain programs. This will be a frustrating situation for both students and professors and may disrupt students' learning experience. It will also require students more time to catch up with their peers. As some of you may know, the coronavirus pandemic has made job hunting for graduating students very challenging. This has made students shift their interests from one industry to another. It may also lead to interpersonal issues um, that are the result of decreased interaction with different people. In Japan, employers don't like graduates with a gap in employment. 
the Minister of Health, Labor and Welfare, Minister Tamura, requested business communities to consider graduates for this year be fresh graduates for three years until they secure a job. The lack of, the lack of access to resources amid the ongoing pandemic can be a hindrance. Companies in both Canada and Japan value different requirements which may not be available because of this current situation. They value extracurricular activities, qualifications, and broadening one's network for shaping a student to become a valuable member of the company's team. So we have identified the issues that we have right now. Therefore, we came up with a solution. So our solution is to blend online and in-person courses, which is like lab and language courses, um, which means students will mix campus-based and online learning. This already um, is happening before COVID, but it was not a popular option among students and professors of all course enrollments before the pandemic. So the benefits um, are providing both options for students. They can do online asynchronous learning and also in-person and synchronous learning to, to learn effectively. So they can focus on self-exploration. There is an option for them to preview their material and making it on their own pace. So as many university students, they have a part-time job and also many time conflicts between their work and also mandatory classes. And also they have the time to discover the material, which is easier for discussions and they can improve in performance. There's a research conducted by the US Department of Education, which shows that in blending learning, student performance improves over both face-to-face -face and fully online learning as students are spending more time on tasks in blending learning courses. So this is a graph from a website moderated by Dr. Tony Bates, who is a research associate in the field of online learning and distance education. This describes the potential impact of COVID-19 on online learning enrollment. So you can see from the graph, in 2015, there were only 10% of people enrolled in fully online courses, and the um, other 20% of people enrolled in blend blended online courses, and the rest of 70% of people are having in-person classes. It is expected that after COVID-19, courses that have successfully moved online during the pandemic are likely to stay online if there's su sufficient demand from the students. Even though fully online classes are not expected to increase more than 20 to 25% of all credit course enrollments, it is estimated that there will be a rapid increase in blending learning after the pandemic. I'm just gonna quickly talk about my experience. So one of my Japanese language classes allows people to come in person. And if you're not feeling well, you can assess the live lectures through Zoom online. And also the lecture videos are posted and recorded on the website in case you cannot come to class. And also the course materials are really prepared on school website. So I think this solution is really good. I'll pass it on to Kenny. So another aspect of our solution that we want to introduce is to provide smaller classes and have them being advised by senior students. These senior students would help act as leaders in that they're able to help facilitate the class sessions and create a sense of community amongst, the, amongst themselves and the group of students, which is very important during a time where online learning is still being considered the norm. And this would help ensure elements of accountability amongst fellow students so everyone can continue to remain engaged and remain interested in learning about the content. So some of the benefits of adopting a, a smaller class size or this mentoring session, if you will, is that online learning would provide the opportunity for uh, better discussions as well as reflections in various activities, especially for introverted students that they're more timid and they would have a harder time to open up themselves. If they're able to do so in an online environment, which has been made possible through uh, different ways of communication, whether that may be writing comments or uh, actively working on the same platform, such as a Google Doc, it makes it easier to practice those interpersonal skills that would be very needed once they move into the workforce. And, and another benefit of adopting these uh, smaller mentoring sessions is that it gains uh, some practice or it provides a place for students to practice using online tools, which can become a marketable skill and help future-proof the workplace. All in all, all of these solutions are would try to focus on 
fostering a sense of community in an online space. While we do recognize some of the challenges that uh, students still may, may need a sustainable access to technology to get involved and be able to build these skills in terms of working online and using online tools, we think of it would be a worthwhile investment because it provides opportunities for students that have recently graduated to gain some leadership skills through the mentorship programs that they'll be able to carry on into the workplace and provide some relevant experience and also to continue to foster the sense of community and ensure that le the learning experience in an online setting would be just as valuable as it were to be in an in-person setting. Thank you for listening and we will open it up for questions. Actually, I'm quite intrigued by this. Uh, the hybrid solution uh, is actually something that a gentleman named Marshall McLuhan, who was born in Edmonton, he was the person who coined the phrase global village. You might be interested in him. Uh, he's a Canadian uh, with an international perspective. And it's, it is a very intriguing question about student mentorship. How, how could you imagine that uh, you know, is it a volunteer position? Is it something like a practicum? What were you thinking? I was thinking it could be more of a practicum in that, uh, especially referring back to the case in Japan where the um, Minister of Health has extended the number of years for graduates to retain their fresh graduate status from one to three years. During that time, it, it would be a interesting idea for students to uh, have access to this opportunity because they have recently graduated from the university. They have a working relationship with some professors, with some instructors. And uh, the main idea or the inspiration behind it was student-led seminars where it is ultimately falling on the uh, determination and the drive that the senior students have to be able to take on the challenge of trying to mentor other students and to help uh, can help foster that sense of learning. Uh, I really like this idea. I've seen um, some institutions in Edmonton, not U of A, but others, um, they've had a significant drop in international students and have moved their class sizes from 30 per class to 90 per class, which is a real strain on the student experience and on the instructors. Um, and it reminds me back to my days at the University of Alberta, where some of us would help kind of be gardeners and stimulate discussions and be that sort of fellow who keeps things going just to get a little le extra leadership experience. So I think your, your idea is very timely. And to reflect on what uh, Princess Takamoto was saying, it also really highlights your point of view coming to, to life here. So I think this is, this is a, probably an important piece for many um, institutions to listen to. So I'm, I'm curious how your point of view and your own experiences shaped how you um, developed this idea? While we were brainstorming as a team, uh, one of the points that came up, especially from the transition to online classes, is just the feeling that you, you're not really talking with anyone. You're not, uh, it's harder for you to reach out to your professor. It's harder to reach out to your peers. And it, and it makes it easier for students to procrastinate and not feel interested in the work until the deadline or until the date of the final exam where everyone's just cramming everything. So uh, that's part of the reason why we tried to approach hybrid learning or you, and the mentorship idea as a whole is that because in a mentorship setting, chances are you'll have to, you'll have to use your cameras more often just to uh, not, not only introduce yourself, but also just get familiar with everyone. And once you're able to be familiar with everyone, you build that sense of accountability that, all right, we're all in this together. We're all learning in the same space. Let's try our best to not only learn for ourselves, but also learn from each other. And bringing in senior students is valuable from a networking standpoint as well, because not only are the senior students helping uh, the younger students just learn and understand the content, but also just be aware of their experiences, be aware of their further networks and just ship and if they if they share a similar career interest, that would be really helpful. So uh, that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for raising a very contemporary and relevant issue and for looking at the pros and cons of the situation. 
My question is about the relationship that you might imagine between the mentorship group and the instructor or professor of some of the courses. Oh, that is a, that is a very good question, Anne. Um, while we don't have a concrete answer to that question just yet, uh, one idea is that these senior students can help uh, work with the professors and as part of the course, they can work with the professors in terms of designing the course plan because chances are professors are adopting to the change to online courses and they have to adopt or adapt rather their approach to learning. So that's where the senior students can come in and be able to provide their insight, just talk from their experience in terms of how how they were able to pass, pass that course and be able to learn effectively. So it not only adds a leadership aspect for senior students to get involved in this role, but also just uh, planning, collaborating, which are also key parts uh, that, stu that employers would like to see from graduating students. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My next question then is about the mentorship leaders. Would, do you imagine this, envision this as a voluntary role or do you envision it as um, one for which there would be some uh, remuneration? Short answer, ideally remuneration and that's where uh, it would depend on universities, but that would provide incentives for students to take up the challenge. Thank you for your presentation.